Hi guys, welcome back. So today I've got a simple little um, video for you where we're going to be creating this custom cursor. You can see here we have uh, some five links in our navbar here and when we hover the links uh, in our uh, cursor grows. You can see it's, uh, we have, we're using the mixed blend mode to make it reveal the underlying text in a different colour as well. Okay, when we leave the link it will go back to normal. So yes, yeah, pretty much uh, just makes the page more interesting I think when you use these custom cursors, it can look quite classy sometimes. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy guys and let's get let's get going. Cheers. Okay guys, so to get started, I've got the usual files, index.html, style.css and app.js. I've got a boilerplate going here in the HTML file. I'm going to link to the app.js file in the body and then also link to the style.css file in the header. I'm also going to copy this Google fonts here. Um, just copy, uh, paste the um, link tag in the header and we're also going to embed the CSS. Uh, in our global CSS settings. Come to style.css, just use the star and paste the font family in there. Coming back to the HTML file, I'm just going to start off by creating a nav. And then in this nav, we're going to do an unordered list and then five separate li elements which all contain anchor tags. Okay, I'm just going to link them to the hash, the pound symbol for now, as they're not going to go anywhere. Within the anchor tags, just put whatever you want. I'm just going to use home about products. Uh, blog and contact and then come under here we're just going to say div and this is going to be our inner cursor and then we're going to do another div with the outer cursor okay this is going to be our custom cursor we create that's pretty much it now you can see our nav bar there our nav links uh, come into the style.css now if we go into our global settings up here uh, we're just going to do the usual so margin zero We'll do padding zero. Uh, we'll do box size in border box. And then coming under here, we're just going to select our anchor, uh, link tags and we're just going to say text decoration of none just to remove the lines underneath. And we're also going to set the color to black. Okay, as you can see, our lines have been removed now and the text is black. Come underneath this, we're going to do body and HTML and we're just going to make the uh, width of this 100% and the height 200 VH just to show some scrolling and then we also want to set the background to black so the mixed blend mode works on the mouse okay so that's pretty much it for the body and HTML underneath here we're going to do our nav we're going to say position relative and then we want a width of 100% again and then a height of we'll say about 10% for this and then come underneath so we'll say background color we'll just, I'll just show red for now just so you can see there's our nav bar there and then we're going to remove that and then if we come underneath here we're going to select our UL element so our unordered list of links here and then we're going to say position fit a relative again and then we'll say here uh, top 50% and then that's 50% of the uh, nav, nav bar and then we'll say width of 100% to fill the nav bar and we're just going to say a height of 50% okay so this UL will fill 50% of the nav bar and background of red just to show you that's that's our um, UL element there and then we're going to say uh, display flex to make the links appear horizontally like so and then we're going to come underneath this we're going to say um, list style of none to remove the bullet points and then also we just want to um, we're going to want to justify the content okay so justify content we're just going to say space uh, space around, okay? We'll move that red background as well. So now you can see our links are evenly spaced out like so, okay? So now let's do our cursor. If we come underneath here, we're just going to say dot inner cursor to select the inner part. And we're going to say position fixed. And then we're also going to say left. And we want just 10 pixels for now, just to start it somewhere. And we're going to say a width of, and we'll give it a width of 10 pixels. And we also give it a height of 10 pixels as well. And then we're going to say um, transform translate minus 50% minus 50%. So it centers up with the mouse pointer. And then we're going to say a background color of white as we're going to be applying a, a mixed blend mode. Okay. So this will just um, make it uh, appear different to the, the background color, which is white. So that's why we're setting this mixed blend mode difference here. We can say border radius of 50% to make it a nice circle shape. 
and then we're going to say pointer events none so we can click the underlying um, links underneath this div and then we're going to say transition width of 0.5 sex and height of 0.5 sex and we're going to be using this transition when we hover on our links okay so you can see our cursor there our inner cursor now let's just do um, inner, inner cursor dot grow and this is going to be the CSS that's applied when we hover on a link okay so we're going to adjust the width and the height to 25 pixels to make it bigger and we're going to apply this same transition timing to when we uh, apply this CSS class here. Let's come onto our outer cursor now. We're going to say position fixed again. Again, left of 10 pixels just to give it a starting position. And then we're going to say width of 25 pixels and a height of 25 pixels. And then coming underneath this, we're going to say transform translate minus 50% again. Just to center it up with the uh, other cursor, inner cursor. I'm going to give this a border of 1px solid white. We're using white again because we're going to apply the mixed blend mode of difference with this outer cursor as well. So it should display black on the white background. Let's just do that now. So if we say um, mixed blend mode difference, you can see that there's our border there. And then if we just do a border radius of this again, 50% to make it a circle shape. Pointer events of none again, so we can click the underlying links. And then we also say transition 0.1 seconds, okay? Because this is going to be have a little lag when we uh, move the cursor around the screen. Now to add JS, let's just select our cursor first. We'll say let inner cursor equal document dot query selector, and we're just going to say uh, inner hyphen cursor. We do the same for the outer cursor. Just change that to outer cursor, and change that inner to outer as well. And then kind of leave this. We're going to say document dot add event listener. And we're going to list, uh, add the document listen out for a mouse move, and it will trigger this move cursor function whenever our mouse moves. We'll do that function now. So, function move cursor takes in the uh, event. We're going to say let x equal e.client x. This will get the x axis of the mouse on the screen. And we're going to say let um, y equal e.client y. Okay, it's the same thing. So, if we console.log x and y now, you'll get the x and y coordinates of the mouse in the console. See, when we move our mouse, we get the con uh, coordinates listed there. Okay, so if we come back to our function, now we're just going to apply some styling to our inner cursor and outer cursor. So say inner cursor dot style dot left, style dot left, and then we're going to use some back ticks, and we're going to say, um, template this rule here, we're going to say x, px for pixels. So style dot left is x on the x-axis pixels, and style.top will be the wire pixels, okay? We're going to do the same thing for our outer cursor. So this will now move the cursor with our mouse. So if we save that, come back to our browser, you can see now there's a bit of lag because uh, I don't think it likes the screen recording software I'm using. So um, I might have that off actually for this video, but it looks, it looks good when we're not recording uh, on the screen. So let me just take that lag off. We're just going to move that, take that transition element out. Now you can see it moves fine. Okay, and now we're just going to say cursor none in the global settings. So now we just get our custom cursor on the screen. So now, if we do, uh, now we're going to select all the links on our page. So we're going to say let links equals array dot from. We're going to say document dot create select to all, and we're just going to select the a tag. Okay, this will give us all of our um, links in an array. So if we console dot log these links. You can see we have our array there with our five separate links listed. Okay, and now we're going to do a for each on this array. We're going to say links dot for each link, and then in here we're going to create a function. We're going to say link dot add event listener. So this will be applied to all the links. We're going to say mouse over. Okay, and when we hover our mouse over the link, we're going to apply it, um, that grow class to our inner cursor. Okay, so it makes the inner cursor bigger. It's just to show you this grow class here we apply it to make the width and height 25 pixels. So now you can see when we hover a link, our inner cursor grows. But now we just need to go back to normal when we leave the link. Okay, so if we come back into our function here, we're going to do another copy this part here, which is going to say mouse leave this time for the event listener. And then we're just going to simply change that add to remove. Okay. So now you can see, if we go back to our browser, when we hover a link, our inner cursor grows and it goes back to normal when we leave. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. That's um, how we build this custom cursor. It moves with the scroll as well as we're using position fixed. So yeah, it's a nice little cursor. Uh, makes the page pretty interesting.
But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheers.